when business is not going the way you were hoping for it to go, the way you were preparing for it to go in the new year, you have goals that you want to reach and you're just being discouraged because of the market. It's uncontrollable. This is more so of an internal mindset thing. If you don't fix that, then you will always be discouraged. I must say, if you set yourself high expectations and you don't reach them, you're going to be disappointed. This is a personal philosophy of mine, not everyone's, but I'm not a guy that can say, let's aim for the stars and I hit the moon and I'm cool with it. Let me aim for the three story building. And if I hit the moon, oh man, let's go. You know, I set realistic expectations. So with the market, you know, like last year, I know what I hit in terms of GCI. I was very pleased with it. Like, can I hit that next year? I don't know. I was really high. And if I don't hit it, am I okay with that? Yeah, yeah, I'll be cool with it. You're listening to the number one real estate podcast in the world. We talk with real estate professionals all across North America about their wins, losses, lessons, and stories to help you win in your local market today. My name is Cody from Sheridan Street. And usually I would say, this is Vikram Deal from the Real Estate Sales Academy, but somehow our wires got crossed today. And if you're listening back on iTunes or Spotify, first off, I want to say thank you. But Vic's not here today. Usually he, you know, we we banter in the beginning. If you listen to the RG podcast uh, in the past or if you're a loyal subscriber, I want to say thank you. But Vic's not here today. He's getting a haircut right now because somehow uh, this podcast did not end up on his calendar. So the moral of the story is uh, if you do a podcast or you do any form of entertainment, make sure that uh, all parties involved in the podcast are added to the Google Calendar. But without further ado, we have a very special guest with us today, somebody that uh, is crushing the world of online social media, uh, somebody that uh, you know we didn't have the opportunity to meet when we were at the real event in San Diego. Uh, but uh, saw from afar uh, at the event, uh, do some really cool things in the in the world of real estate, personal branding, social media. Um, we have Ed Stulak here with us on the R Agent Podcast. Ed, why don't you give our listeners and people that have a podcast kind of the the high level spark notes version of how you got into the business, uh, what you're up to, and uh, yeah, give us the cliff notes uh, version of the real estate journey. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for having me. And I'm glad that I can have you for myself, I guess. Right. Special yeah, exactly. Podcast today. <laughs> Victor's missing out. Uh, so the, the clip note version, I'm a hockey player that found social media who found real estate. And it started in college. I was recruited to the Penn State ice hockey team. It's the only reason I went to Penn State. I was studying pre-med, studying science, the pre-dentistry, kinesiology, anything you can imagine. None of it worked out. Then I got home, started to dabble with Instagram back in 2011 and really liked it. Precipice and of Instagram, like right on like, like an original Instagram. Okay, cool. OG, when videos weren't even a thing. Yeah. Filters were still cool. And I posted my first picture, got some you know engagement on it. It was just... And it was a hockey hat and, you know, posting up, just playing pond hockey outside. And I got two likes on it, you know, but something triggered me thinking like those two likes could have very easily purchased that hat if, I was, if it was for sale. And yeah. that was $0 marketing budget. I didn't put money into it. I just put time and honestly, a picture that I took with my phone. I posted it, got some love and I'm thinking, how can I get more likes? How can I get more followers? But what am I going to sell to those followers once I get them? And so since 2011 till, you know, 2012, 13, 14, started dabbling with it a lot more, helping influencers, celebrities, DJs, musicians, artists. So interesting. Grow their presence and I helped them grow presence, get sponsorships, get, you know, gigs and tours. And I'm thinking, all right, this is, this is, there's something here. There was one thing that was not there and that was money. So I'm like, all right, this is cool, but I need to do something better. So long story short, clip no, back to that. I am a social media guy that found real estate. And now by finding real estate, I'm taking all the things I've ever learned in my social media world and that era and bringing it to real estate and it worked. So interesting that you started in social media and then you transitioned into real estate. A lot of people get into real estate and out of necessity, they have to figure out social media, you know, even getting them to kind of shift their mindset around like you're a media company, you're a personal brand. Like you know, you need to post content, like even trying to, um, 
understand that because like I think you're on the exact opposite spectrum where it's like you figure it out social media and then you found real estate where a lot of people it's like they found real estate and then they're even they're, they're still trying to figure out how to do how to how to do social media in the market today you know the whole idea and the whole premise of this podcast is you know wins losses lessons and stories help other agents win in their market in the market today what would you say is the number one thing that's working for you right now when it comes to social media authenticity and vulnerability which i say it very easily because everyone always hits me with questions like what what works today you know what's the algorithm what's the secret yeah. song you know 10 years ago back in 2011 12 13 I would have very easily said, hey, try this website out. It's really good. Like it's going to yeah. talk for you and automate and like for you and it's automated and it works and it got me followers and it got me some engagement and traffic and business. But today that method is out the window. It's no longer a f today. It's vulnerability. It's being authentic. It's being your true self. It's being personable, personability, right. which is such a huge aspect and element that is forgotten about. You know, yeah. social media truly took the social out of society. It's it's like now we're in person, we speak with one another and yeah, I know some networking events are cool and we chat, but I feel like the social media realm is also a platform to be social on, not just to post and like and get that ego boost and you know, that the boost of I don't know, love from people. Communicate, start engagements. Yeah, so, social media I always say social media was not created as a marketing tool, it was created as a means to actually socially network. Like it like actually connect with people, actually DM them, actually ask how they're doing, actually have a conversation. Like if we actually believe that all conversion happens in conversation, and that's actually a belief that we have, we're going to do that. And look, the the per, the man the man has arrived. You know, I wasn't expecting <laughs> him to actually show up and he just pops in because I did send him the link, but he's here. And for those that aren't watching back on YouTube, <laughs> to see what just happened right now. What happened, bro? Vikram Deal from the Real Estate Sales Academy has popped into uh, <laughs> popped into uh, uh, the show, uh, the RG podcast. So if you're just tuning in for the first time, I want to uh, say we do have a co-host. His name is Vikram Deal. Vic, uh, we were just jamming about social media, about authenticity, and uh, oh. Ed was telling us about uh, how he started as a social media guy, and he and he had nothing to sell, so he found real estate and. We were just jamming about authenticity. I was, I was asking him, like, what is like the number one thing that is working in the space today? And he gave me a very different answer than what I thought he would give me. Uh, you know, because like, but we chatted about actually being social with people, actually having conversations, actually giving a damn about the people that actually follow us. And I think it's a, it's a massive precipice that we're on, especially in the social media landscape around like everyone sees the likes, everyone sees the comments and th that's, that's the big thing. But it's like, are people actually, do they give a damn? Uh, do you give a damn about the people that you're actually interacting with and how you're corresponding with? So Vic, welcome to the show as well. What's up guys? I've been yeah. here for so long. You just didn't let me in the room, Cody. Oh, really? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, it's weird. I pay for this. I pay for Riverside, but I can't even get in. I'm not even the hey. host. It happens. Not even a, Ed, I'm not even a co-host, bro, on Riverside, wow. and I pay for it. Wow, look at that. I got my haircut yesterday thinking I'm going to look good. Like, you just beat me. Look at you. <laughs> bro, I, <laughs> Cody, Cody texts me, for those of you guys who don't know, so Cody texts me at like 2 o'clock. He's like, hey, you coming? And I'm like, what did I miss? And I look at my calendar. I'm like, no, nah, it's 3 o'clock, dude. He's like, no, we have a 2 o'clock. And I'm like, no, we don't. And he's like, oh, shit, you're not on there. And Cody's normally like... So that's why it's funny because like Cody never misses a beat when it comes to this stuff. So, and I never leave my house like in the middle of the day. Yeah. And so the one day so I'm like, is... oh, I'll just leave the house. Like, no big deal. Um, we go. But yeah, I mean, I don't know what your answer is. I think most people are on social. And I think the way they prospect is a way that they... The way they prospect with leads that come in is the same way. It's the same mentality and mindset, unfortunately, with people on our social media accounts. And I'm 100% guilty of it too, right? Because... I'll go out there and I'll get all these new people, but then I don't connect with them in a meaningful way. And I'm like, oh, I can help this person. Let me go reach out to them. And I don't connect with them in a meaningful way. And then if I don't get the response I want from them, I'm like, ah, fuck it. On to the next. There's 18,000 more people, right? And and I think what's hard is, um, personally, is that I'm shifting my mindset that people are people, right? Because this is how we treated our prospects when we... Uh, We'd buy Zillow leads, right? We'd buy um, Boomtown leads. We bought a bunch of different leads because Cody wasn't around back then. And I was like, you guys, picture of somebody you love next to a mirror. 
So it's have a mirror on your wall. So I bought all these cheap ass mirrors, but like 10 of them. I also bought surf leashes to tie them to the, to the desk. If they were, uh, if the monkeys were trying to run, run out of the cage. Uh, and I would put a picture of somebody they loved and I'd put a mirror next to it. And I said, now when you prospect, look at that person and look at your face. And do you actually mean what you say? Dude, our conversations changed overnight. How do you translate something like that into social media? Like, how do you be authentic? Like, because I think a lot of people, I would love to hear from both of you, you starting with Ed and then we'll move to Vic. How do we, as agents that right now, a lot of us, like whether agents want to uh, want to, uh, want to recognize it or not, the vast majority of businesses are down 30 to 40 to 50 to 70% to chat with enough agents. And this is just, this has nothing to do with, sometimes it has nothing to do with you. Sometimes it has to do with the market. Your income is tied to how is the market doing in a lot of, a well, lot if of the markets. If the market's down 25% in transaction volume and you're down 40%, yeah. it's, it's a you thing. That's so, a you thing. Ha- how do you, how does somebody be authentic on social media when the, you know, and, and the brand out there, you know, we talk about authenticity, authenticity. It's like there are a lot of agents that are right now that are actually struggling. And like, we're just trying to even open up the conversation to be like, Hey, it's okay to be struggling. It's okay to be honest online. Why don't you even break that apart? Cause that to me doesn't even, that, that to me is like, we need counseling. Like <laughs> how, how do you, how, like, how do we do that? How do we be authentic? <clears throat> it's hard to do that especially in a bad market when business is not going the way you were hoping for it to go the way you were preparing for it to go in the new year you have goals that you want to reach and you're just being discouraged because of the market it's uncontrollable this is more so of an internal mindset thing if you don't fix that then you will always be discouraged i must say if you set yourself high expectations and you don't reach them you're going to be disappointed This is a personal philosophy of mine, not everyone's, but I'm not a guy that can say, let's aim for the stars and I hit the moon and I'm cool with it. Let me aim for the three-story building and if I hit the moon, oh man, let's go. You know, I set realistic expectations. So with the market, you know, like last year, I know what I hit in terms of GCI. I was very pleased with it. Like, can I hit that next year? So I don't know. I was really high. And if I don't hit it, am I okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be cool with it. Screw it. Whatever. So same thing when it comes to the market, it's it's more so uncontrollable. I can't control it. I have my methods. I have my strategies. I invest into them. They work for me. Sometimes they won't. Okay, that's fine. I have to take a step back and re-strategize. We all do it in business. Whether you're a realtor, a plumber, a mechanic, a musician, doesn't matter. You got to re-strategize things. You have to adapt. So if someone's not okay with adapting, then of course they're going to be discouraged. Because, oh, it doesn't work for me like it did in 2022. And 2021 was my best year ever. What happened? market you can't do anything about it so yeah as you're saying Vic I mean if it goes down 40 percent and you're down or, or sorry market's down 25 percent and, and you're down 40 percent yeah it's probably a you thing and you should truly re-strategize because you should kind of be aligned with that market so am I at the level of um uh amount of houses that we sold last year you know my team and I sold 187 houses last year that was a record for us amazing happy this year we're on track for 75 80 something like that Nowhere near. So what do we do at this point? What's what's going on in that department? I got to re-strategize. But I'm not going to try to kill myself over it. And now with that said, once that mindset is kind of tuned up correctly to an adaptability level where I'm willing to adapt, okay with it, now can I still be authentic? Can I still be my true self and showcase even the darkest of days? Can I still be bright in them? Can I still be that shine of light for my team, for my clients, for my followers? I still got to be. Because there's so many people that are so down on themselves. And as a social media guy, I have a, a persona. I have to still portray that. Like, it's okay. It'll be great. It's a great day to be great. That's what I got on my wall. It's a great day to be great. It doesn't matter what day it is. It's a bad day, a good day. Move on, you know? So, and that allows me to be authentic is the main point of that though. Because I know market really screws people's mindsets up sometimes. And they're like, I, well, I'm, I'm nowhere near where I was last year. So how can I be myself? And how can I post? Stop posting. Start picking up the phone and cold calling. Social media works for me, so I'm going to continue doing what works best, and that's social media. That's what gets me business and exposure, you know? Yeah, I love it, man. Um, you know, agents always have this. I, I'm a firm believer, and I've talked to Cody about it because at first I was like, you know, if I can get agents to seven figures, right? I I got to seven figures. I did it. Good market, bad market. Like, we were consistent. We did well. That was a team. The team did seven figures, and when I started Cody and I were talking about niching down and he's like, 
you know, he really helped me about six months ago. And he said, bro, do you really want to help that? Or like, what's your bread and butter? He's like, it's, it's one thing to have like your personal clients that you help scale their teams or like get their team set up and evolve. He's like, it's cool. You've done that. But what do you really like? What would like make you feel really good if that was your message? I was like two agents a month, two deals a month. Agents can get to two deals a month. I fundamentally believe the average agent, if they can get to two deals a month that we train, it'll change their lives. I have a fundamental belief, two deals a month consistently, 24 deals a year. Most people are happy. Not only are they happy, they're excited, right? And you can grow from there, right? You can grow from there, but I have agents come in and they say, I want to do 60 deals next year. Okay, how long have you been in business for? Five years. What's the best year you've ever had? 16. Okay, so you hire me and you're going to go from 16 to 60 because you spent a couple grand and you showed up a couple hours a week and you, you just expect magically you're going to go. Like, let me see your calendar. What time do you wake up? When it comes to being authentic online, one of the things, Cody, that I think people need to do is they need to find the four, two, three, four pillars that they want to people to know about them. And once you get comfortable with people knowing those four pillars, maybe it's all work, right? Maybe it's all work. And then in your story, you sprinkle in your, your little rugrats and your dog and your, you know, gym routine. And then as you start to get to know people and people start to follow you and you get more comfortable, you're like, you know what? Last year was a tough year. It was dark. And because you've got reps in, you can now open up and share like, Hey, this has been a hard year. Yeah. Like if you're having a hard year, but it's, I think it comes with the reps and it comes with the truthfulness that people don't have in our industry. It's just like yep. when somebody says to you, I want to do 800 deals, but you've only done 50 consistently. Like when you're not true to yourself, it's hard to be true and authentic everywhere else. Well, yes. It's hard to be congruent. It's hard to be congruent yeah. with absolutely. Like, it, you know, if you're set, if you keep setting like, and I love what you said, I had like, you know, I'd rather shoot for the third building. And then if I hit the moon, it's even greater. It's hard to say, hey, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the gym. And then if you That's consistently hard. let yourself down every single day, you know, like you you then subconsciously program yourself to be, you're like, I, I don't, I'm not a person of my word. And that, that becomes a very difficult conversation to have with yourself. And I think there's so many agents right there out there right now. And I want to get your perspective on, on, the, on this, guys. Uh, there's so many agents out there that are concerned, rightfully so, about what's happening in the marketplace. Zillow buying follow up boss. The war is happening right now in two different countries. Law, lawsuits up the interest yin -yang. rates, lawsuits out the yin yang, NAR, <laughs> NAR scandals. There's so much happening in the marketplace. Like you both have ran teams. Uh you both like, you know, Vic, you've ran a team. Ed, you currently run a team. What is the what is the message that you're giving to the agents right now that keeps their spirits high? Like how and, and uh, 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 this is a two part question. A, how do you keep your mindset straight of all the shit that's happening in the world right now? We're in one of the straight in, in the in the last 10 years, this has been one of the strangest. Like, like I said this to Vic the other day. I said, it feels like in real estate right now, real estate's facing the 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 pandemic yeah. that restaurants faced in 20. Like it feels like that for a lot. There's a lot happening in the world. We're in a recession. How do you protect your mindset and how do you protect your meet the team's mindset? And what feels like a shit show? In fun. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know. My answer is very cutthroat. Um, I think a lot of people are, are Cuba PG uh, sensitive. Let's call it call it sensitive. Uh, media as the double edged sword. It's a beautiful yeah. thing, but man, shut up! Don't listen to that shit. It is so overpowering, and people are sensitive and naive enough to be tricked and people listen to it i i, I almost want to call it like very similar to that of what happened with with what let's let me talk about threads for a second not really relevant but kind of relevant to the concept that i'm trying to make here it's physics so i'm going to pull back a step here physics as high as you throw something up it will fall that fast down depending on how how heavy it is so meaning threads blew up overnight Threads was such a powerful, crazy, the whole world talked about it. Elon Musk going down, Twitter dying. What happened? Fizzle. What? Four or five days later, it was already just like, oh, you're still on yeah. Threads? Like, who's even threading anymore? Thre 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 threads, it, is the one night, threads is the one night stand. One night stand. The 
the what, what, what's the um, one hit wonder, right? Uh, one hits one 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 hit wonders have happened so many times. Clubhouse, Pokemon Go, Threads now. Anything that comes that fast is going to go that fast is the point. So now, bringing it back into this conversation to make it more relevant and tangible, media really being talked about right now out of nowhere. Yet, this case has been talked about for years now. It, it happened, what, back in 2019 it started? And like, like I know now it started to really hit the media. But again, everyone's talking about it. The second that people stop talking about it, it's people gone. will chill out and be like, oh, we're good. We just had to adjust. Again, I'll use that word adjust so we adjust to what the what the now is the now is that our legal contract to submit offers is no longer three pages as it used to be back in 1990 it's now 14 pages long with a bunch of nonsense in there like for example you have to understand that your house has air rights which means all these lists of airports are allowed to fly over your house like no way do i have any say to say no to that okay why is it in the contract i don't know it is because because an attorney well, wanted an attorney needed to get paid one day so he an attorney he so earned that's his keep this whole case it's one of those things that is going to go up and it's going to come down that fast as soon as social media stops talking about it so much and realtors like us stop talking about it also because it's not a crazy thing okay it's an adjustment something that has always been meaning sellers are paying buyers and uh, buyers agent sellers agent look fine that's always been a thing now it's a problem because of wording okay so we fix the wording and now it's good it'll be good and once i express that to my team and the agents that i talk to they kind of understand the simplicity of this whole concept it's not that over dramatic that we make it it's truly not relax chillax market uncontrollable do not overwhelm yourself with something you can't control if a client that calls me freaks out is it going to ruin my next five years am i going to regret what i'm gonna say to this client in five years no then don't don't overwhelm yourself with it let it bother you for five seconds just let it eat your out uh, eat your heart out and then just be like you know what let me take this and either go option a or option b option a i'm about to mess this whole thing up option b you know what let me keep going because it matters five years from now that's kind of how i look at it and so when i express my philosophy to my teammates and, under, and, and explain it so simply like that, they kind of take a seat and relax a little bit. Now, again, I know that's so easily said, but it truly does come down to mindset. This is not a mindset that I adapted overnight. This is from years of getting screwed over, of having terrible experiences, <laughs> of having way too, too many over expectations and underestimating them. It's, you know, now it's like, all right, let's just take fact. I go off of facts. I don't go off of what could be, what can happen. I, I don't know. So when I explain it, you know. One of the, the coolest things that Sharon shared with me, I was I was having a difficult time making a decision and I was very emotional about this decision a couple of years ago. And Sharon said to me, he said, I was making a big business decision. And he said, literally, and I love what you said about, this ties back Ed, to what you're saying about, like I make decisions off facts. It's like whenever you have a really difficult decision you need to make, grab a pen, grab a paper, draw a line down the middle top of the left hand corner facts and the top of uh, the right hand corner feelings nice. and then jot down every single thing about that specific thing about how what are the facts we oh. <laughs> cody we lost you and ed was ed was like jamming with you he was with you and his head was still moving yeah. i was like <laughs> i don't right. want to interrupt because ed was into the conversation yeah. and i was like it's called improv, Vic. You can yeah, improv. You gotta I, improv I, I, Vic. i'm in Colombia, bro so like i'm in medellin and I thought maybe my internet blew up again. I don't have any lights on in the house. It's like beautiful no, day. So I was like, where? Okay. <laughs> so facts and feelings. Facts and feelings. Uh, facts and feelings. Grab a grab a pen and paper. You have a hard decision you need to make in your business or your life. Facts on left side. Uh, feelings yeah, on the other the side. Way? It'll help you make the decision. So that's good. Vic, like you know, like I would love to hear from you, and then we can keep on uh, jamming. But like, what are like what are you like? You're having a conversation with a lot of agents right now in the marketplace. Yeah around like th these decisions that these tough things that are happening like you know ed had chatted with us like you know he has a large team like what are you yeah. advising agents like how can we get agents to see the forest from the trees how can we get them to see the light at the end of the tunnel curate your content curate your life right so we, we talked about this yesterday actually and you know last couple of days i've been waking up again at 4 30 um 
four o'clock this morning. I got up at two thirty. I couldn't sleep. I just threw on a Joe Dispenza meditation. It was like forty five minutes. I was laying down for it. Um, you know, and it's I, I was laying down in the hyperbaric chamber. Um, and so like I realized that what happens for for me, and it could be similar for other people. I hope not, but what happens for me is I'll start to self sabotage. Nice. Have like a really good month, bring in like a bunch of new money. I'm like, cool, feels great. And then the following month, I'll stop doing the activities unless I'm consistently curating every day of my life. And you don't curate when you're in the dumps, you curate when you're feeling good. So you go out to the gym, right? I, I, did, a, I did a piece of content one day. I just got back from a crazy bike ride. I was in my kitchen. I was pumped up. I had my bibs down. So you, it looked like I was not wearing a shirt. And this woman says, you know, it's great content, but you look like you're drunk and I can't follow you. And I was like, it's snide remarks that people make like that, that stop people from doing the stuff when they're excited. Because when you have a great workout, you guys know this, you have a great workout, your endorphins are high, you feel good. And when you take care of yourself, there's something that happens inside of your body and your mind and the universe, which is like, we should reward this person more because this is a person that cares. When we, when we, when we, when we focus on others, right? We talked about this on our webinar mm -hmm. earlier today. When we focus on others, what happens? When we focus on others, what happens? We think about their best interest. When we focus on our friends, even though we have problems, when we focus on our friends' problems, what happens to our problems? They disappear. When we focus on the market, what happens? The market exacerbates in fear. But if we focus on that one client that we have, I, I got one client right now. Dude, thank you, God. The best is here and more is to come. I got one client. I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to do a damn good job for them. And that one will turn to two. And then that two turns to four. And that four doesn't turn to eight. Four turns to 12. And if you treat everybody, right? Like, here's the thing. If you go into your database right now and you say, everybody in here is going to buy something at some point. Everybody in here is going to buy leads. Everybody in here is going to buy a house. Everybody in here at some point is going to buy some coaching. If I treat them like a human and you treat them like a human and you treat them like a human, you're going to have a higher chance of sitting down with this. <laughs> and instead of focusing on the market, right? Like, dude, the market's always shifting. Well, and, and I wrote this down, you, you know, Ed, you said something earlier. When, when was the last time agent? and I love you guys and I want to be real with you, when was the last time where you put on your wall, right? You go to an event, you go to a grant, you go to a Tom and they say, 10 X year goals, add a zero to it. So you put a hundred thousand dollars down. You're at 50, you put a hundred, you're like, that's a fucking stretch. And now they put a million and you're like, every day I woke up, every day, dude, for two years, I woke up and I was looked at this board that said I was going to do uh, 150 transactions every day. Cause I was like, we're going to do 150. We're going to do 150. We never got close to 150. And then I took it down. We had our best three years back to back. Boom, boom, boom. I was focusing on my team every day and not on some arbitrary number. Somebody from stage said, add, a, add another number to it. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what to do. I, I don't even really care about that number. But because everybody around me was like, yeah, I'm going to do 5 million, trillion, gazillion. And that's what I, that's the one thing that I hated going to real estate conferences. I hate like, it. I'm with you. I'm with you. Not pleasant. It's not Roll. fun because the first question out, it's like, Imagine you're at a bar and it's like the first question out of your mouth is uh, of a woman's mouth to, it's all men on this show. Hey, how big's your bank account? Excuse right. me? Well, how much money do you make? Um, I don't know, 50 bucks. Like, I didn't say 50 bucks a minute, an hour, a second. I just said 50 bucks. Oh, you don't make enough money. Really? Okay, cool. I'm going to go get on my Range Rover and drive away. Oh, you have a Range Rover? Well, yeah, you didn't clarify and quite frankly, I don't need to fucking talk to somebody like that. And so you go to these events and everybody, instead of saying like, Hey, Ed, how are you doing, bro? Like I saw that badass Cohiba sticker behind, uh, drawing behind your head at the podcast. I got you, a, got you a beautiful thing. It's, you know, when you get your group of friends and it changes conversations, but the average yeah. conversation that I used to hear was, Hey bro, what's your GCI? How many team members? I'm like, Hey man, good to see you too. Like I'm a human before I'm a number. If we become more humans instead of more numbers, if we become more human driven, right. And when I sold Cutco, I gave away more Cutco than anybody in my office. I sold more than everybody. I gave away more than everybody. Everybody's like, oh, you only sell because you give away stuff. I was like, no, I only give away stuff because I sell. And I give away stuff because I go to my parents' parties 23 years later and two people are like, Vic Ripkeo, do you remember me? And I'm like, uh, they're like, you sold us knives. And I'm like, oh, they're like, 
I'm Margie Matter. I'm like, oh, what's up, Margie? She's like, yeah, come meet my husband. Honey, you have to meet Vikram. He's so awesome. He's the one who sold us those expensive knives, but we've had him for 23 years. He's like, oh, I love my Cutco. He's like, thanks for selling it to us. Great salespeople change lives. Being authentic changes lives. Being- We were saying before, that's it. Exactly. It's, it's authenticity. It's, I was talking to someone at an event last night and I don't know what, what we were talking about, but somehow it got to the topic of him introducing me to someone and him telling that person like, yo, this is Ed. He's so authentic. Dude, he'll just bust out dancing in the middle of his TikToks. I'm like, <laughs> what not do? But like, I'll dance right now. Test me, bro. Yeah. And it's just fun because he's like, dude, it's so authentic. It's so you. Like, I would never be that. Like, why wouldn't you ever be that? What, what stops you from it? I'm not a dancer. I'm like, you're not a dancer. Start hanging out with me and you will be. <laughs> and it's just fun because it's who I am. I, this is how right. I express myself. This is how I lower the barrier for people to say, oh, he's cool. I'm going to talk to him. And if he hits me with a pitch, like, yeah, I'll probably be pissed, but like, he's a cool dude. So I'm going to hang out with him anyway. And if I, if I can get across that barrier, at least, or lower your guard for a second, right? It's just all about lower that jab and you hit him the right way, you'll get him. But the right way isn't to say, hey, I'm a realtor. Do you need my service? Or are you looking to buy or sell? Or with anything, it doesn't matter. You're selling Cutco. The, 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 yeah. the, the, the card, the card, the yeah. greatest compliment you could give me is a referral. I was like, bro, if the I ever card. see one of those. Yeah, no, nah, but the card on the right. back where it says like the greatest compliment I can receive is a referral from, no, actually that's not the greatest compliment. The greatest compliment is like, you telling me that like I'm a rock star, we go out to dinner, we have an amazing night, I get to meet your right. family, we share some wine together, right? We have some, beautiful food. We have great conversations. I learned a little yeah. bit more about how you got to this country or how like you it. got to the position. Cause a lot of my clients were from foreign countries. Like, how did you get into the position to buy these multi-million dollar properties? You asked me about my life. I asked you about your life. We mm -hmm. have an authentic connection. We never even talk about how'd you get into real estate? Well, this is how I did it. I never asked for referrals. 50% of our business came from referral. We never asked for a referral. We just told him at the very, in, the, in our presentation, our buyer and our listing presentation, here's how we seeded it. We asked for referrals three times. First day was at the end of the presentation, it's like, all right, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, um, any questions about how all this works? No. Cool. So um, is it cool if I share a few goals with me, uh, of myself with you? That way we have a little bit of alignment. Absolutely. Um, the first goal is, is that, my job is to provide you with five-star service. And at any time, if you feel like the service has dropped beneath five stars, even a 4.8, tell me or my team member, right? Some people say I'm scary. So tell somebody on my team. Love that. And, and please let us know. Because I'm at right. the end of the transaction, my second goal is that you're going to write me a five-star review on at least one platform, if not two or three, if we did a really great job. And they're like, oh, totally cool. We're setting the frame. We're setting the expectation. The third one, now this is selfish, Right. This is selfish, but I only like to work with really cool people. So if you and I decide that it's a good fit that we work together, then that means you're a cool person and I want to work with your friend. So at the end of the transaction, if I do one and two, you get the home you want for the price you want and the terms that you want, then I'm going to get a referral and you send me somebody who's thinking about buying real estate at some point in their life. And they're like, I was like, does that seem fair? And I was like, in this way, you know, I'm being held accountable to give you the best of the best because this isn't something that I'm going to do for four days and then go get a job. Like I plan to be here for a long time. And so we would get a mutual agreement as Cody calls it. We'd get a mutual agreement right then and there that yes, 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 we're going to do this. And yes, 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 they're going to do that. I was like, you guys, one of our mutual agreements is you guys are not allowed to make big purchases before we close the house. If you're financing, they're like, what's a big purchase? I was like, do you spend more than $800 a month at Costco? No, that's a big purchase. They're like, oh, so don't buy anything for the house. Don't buy shit for the house. Don't even buy, don't even buy a pooper scooper if you haven't bought one in the last 16 months. Don't buy shit. Don't buy a dog. Don't buy a kid. Don't buy nothing. Don't buy a car. And they would laugh and they're like, so basically anytime we're going to buy something, you call me. Are you sure? And I'm like, you know what I'm talking about. They're like, okay, so no purchases. I'm like, I've seen a doctor almost lose his house because they bought a, they, they went from like a $400 payment to a $600 payment on a car. I'm like, really? I was like, the bank freaked out. I was like, that's why you also want to use our people. We would see that the first call. The second appointment we'd show them, I'd get to my little notebook and I'd say, is this your house that you guys want? They're like, no. I'd pull the paper out. I'd throw it into the back of my car. I'd actually throw it in the driveway. Then I'd go run and pick it up. I'm like, I'm not a litter bug. I'm not a litter bug. I'm not a... And they'd laugh and we'd have a good time. That's my character. And I said, hey, so far, how's the service? They go five stars. If they say five stars, the next line out of their mouth is, 
Vic, we will tell you if you ever be- drop below. And don't worry, my wife and I have already been talking about who we can send you. That's sick. I wrote that down. Third time we seated it was so right when we I, got clear to close. I, I would, uh, you know, if you're if you're listening back on iTunes or Spotify and you're driving, I would highly recommend you rewind there for a couple minutes and uh, you write that down because the language pattern, the uh, the 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 tone, the 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 step by step process, the you know the home you want, the price you want, with the terms you want, setting uh, expectations. Yeah, setting expectations. Frame, yeah, framing it, set of expectations. Then nobody feels nobody feels used at the end of the conversation. I I want to I want to shift gears here in wrapping up uh, because I'm I'm really curious because you guys have both ran really large teams and I've had an opportunity. You had to a buy. big team too, bro. You've had a yeah, huge yeah. team too, man. Yeah, yeah. You still um, have a big team. We still have a big team, but uh, we've all ran big teams and um, sometimes coaching them can be difficult, especially in the market that we're in, uh, because, you know, let's call a spade a spade. Uh, the buyers and sellers right now in the marketplace are a little bit more um, apt to making, you know, big financial decisions, whatever you sell. You buy a laptop. Like I literally told a story about this uh, today on the call. It took you two spent, years to buy a laptop. It took me two laptop. years to buy a laptop. Like I make good money and it took me two years to spend. I use this laptop every single day. It took me two years to make this buying decision of like $2,500 for a laptop. And, and, and it didn't even charge you guys. That That's the kicker. Like I can understand using a laptop that's a little slow, yeah. a little clunky, but I can't understand Cody in a, like traveling as much as we did last year. Yeah. I didn't realize until just now that his charger was absolute crap. Yeah. Remember when your charger broke in Argentina? You lost yeah. it. You left it somewhere. Uh, that somewhere? was it. That was in Cartagena. I left it on the plane in Cartagena. <laughs> left it on the plane. Um, it was super, super difficult to find a bag safe. But like, my question for you guys is like, in a in a in a space that is a more competitive because you know like the less transactions that we do, the better agents get the transactions that we are actually available. So. We're in a more competitive market for real estate agents. There's less transaction volume, takes a lot more time in order to close a deal. And there's a lot happening in the world right now that is causing buyers and sellers to be skeptical of making buying decisions. How do we coach our teams to have the positive mindset we all chatted about today while also, you know, having the grit and the perspective that, you know, soon that shall pass and we have the ability to still build, build our businesses some of the some of the greatest businesses are built in in economic Recessions. collapses and in recession so how do we coach our people through that and how do team leads listening to this podcast right now coach their teams towards success i'll start with you ed ed goes out and grabs a cohiba and a scotch and says hey <laughs> hey young stud come out to the field with me <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Vic, now you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so someone someone uh, told me this not too long ago, and it resonated with me so well. Um, so I'll start off with it. That just like a just like a doctor, you're a patient. You're in the waiting room. You know something ain't right with you, right? Something ain't right. He calls you in. You sit down, right? He or she calls you in. You sit down, and, they, and you start going through the whole process. Of, well, how do you feel? Let's take some notes on you. What are your symptoms, right? A few minutes go by, they run through the whole process and they have something bad on that paper. How the hell do I deliver it to this patient without seeming like a you know a jerk or some <laughs> professional or I'm about to ruin this guy's life, right? That doctor doesn't come into that room with the next steps saying, hey, so you got <laughs> And yeah, dude, that's brutal. And I know that's really brutal, sorry, sorry. <laughs> But instead, <laughs> what does that doctor do? Or a good doctor, shall I say? Shall, shall I add? That doctor will probably come in and say, "Listen, I got, I got, good, I got some good news, right? We got, we got a little thing here. It's a little hiccup, but listen, here are some solutions. This is what we're gonna do, right? We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do some chemotherapy. We're gonna vitamins. Have your vitamins. They're, they're the best ones. I got this buddy. He sells them. Like you provide a good atmosphere in a shitty situation. And if you are not that doctor to your clients." to your teammates, to other colleagues in this industry, they will very soon collapse Very, very because you will collapse them. So number one, team leader advice, <laughs> be that good doctor, don't be a bad one. Bring good solutions to your team, right? I'm starting off with the basics for a second. So next step, you know, I, I tell them, guys, I have not been in this business for a long time, I've been in it for a good amount of time to understand a weird market from a good market to a normal market 
to a shitty market. Right now, we're in a super high seller's market, which in my eight years of real estate so far, I've never experienced. A normal market, ladies and gentlemen, is let's present an offer 40,000 below asking and slowly inch our way up and negotiate on the middle point. That's a normal market in my perspective because that's what I experienced pre-COVID. You have a house listed at 500,000, you present 460 and start going from there. But today it's like if you present 500 at a $500,000 asking price, you're, you're crazy, right? So I tell my teammates, which are mostly new, guys, most of you don't know pre-COVID. You are all COVID agents, meaning you only know seller's market. So you think that you posting a property on the MLS, you getting a long line outside of the open house and taking your video clips of, oh, look how long, look big this line is. Look, my marketing skills are awesome. Not at all. Your marketing skills are probably nowhere near what they should be in a normal market. So please strap on because we're about to enter a normal market again. And if you're not prepared for that, this ain't the real estate game for you that you joined. And I need you to start prepping for that. So solution A, and we go into it. Do this, do that. Get your marketing going. Go open houses. You're going to start cold calling. You're going to start reaching out to your client. You're going to start door uh, drop buys. You're going to do that, right? So as a good doctor, I come to my team with, hey, I got some shit news, but like, here's the good side of it. And so that's the mentality that a team leader should take on. I believe this is just my perspective. I could be wrong, but this is my philosophy. You come in with solutions. Don't come in with a problem and oh, discouragement. You're going to blow up your whole team. I'll leave it at that. Vic, I want to hear from you, and then we're going to wrap up. Uh, I, 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 oh, 100%. Yeah, we, we, we got another podcast in three minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, I 100% agree good. with you. I'm just going to add there that, like, you know, every business I've ever been in, uh, it's always been like, how do we find a solution to the problem? I think that is like, if you could start there, not only just with your yeah. team, but with your agent, like with your your clients, like it's like hey, we're going to find a we're gonna, here's the problem, here's the solution. If we'd be solution focused, man, like you know, knock this thing out of the park. I, w- I want to want to hear from you, Vic, and then I want to give yeah. uh, Ed an opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, tell people where they can find him if they want to have a conversation. Totally, brother. Definitely need to get people to talk to him. Prepare before yeah. the problem arises. You don't prepare for winter in the dead of winter. If you're trying to find firewood in the middle of winter time, good luck. You should have been stockpiling for winter. I remember one of my friends, um, and we need to get him on here. I remember one of my friends, I said, hey, bro, do you do buyer consultations? He's like, no, are you kidding me? He's like, how much wasted time you're doing, Vic? I said, well, the market's going to shift. What are you going to do when the market shifts? He's like, I don't know, bro, but I'm not worried about it at this moment. Okay, that's interesting. Do you call expired? <laughs> what? What do you do? He's like, we just buy leads. Okay. Do you have client appreciation parties? Because I've never seen you with one. So you guys did 380 transactions last year, right? Lower price point market, high volume. You guys did 380 transactions last year. You have 380 clients. What do you do with them? Turn and burn, baby. Bro, that's crazy. The mentality that I had with my team was at any given time, we could be in a shit market, but we won't feel it because we're prepared. So in a good market, we're great. In a bad market, we're good. You don't, yeah, like, yeah, we, dude, every day, brother, role play, 7 to 7.45. 7 to 7.45, we role play. And if somebody wasn't in the car, you know what they did? Or if they weren't in the office, they're taking their kids, had a appointment, you know what they did? They phoned in. They phoned in, and we would role play. I put on yeah. Facebook Live. Every day we scripted. We had two scripting sessions every day. We're a sales organization, for God's sake. How? It's too much scripting. It's too much scripting. I'd have other people in other offices say, Vic, you guys practice too much. Mm-hmm. I said, I don't want a lot of people on my team. I want super high productivity from, I said, I don't want 20 agents. You know how, many, you know how hard it is to manage 20 freaking personalities, 20 families, 20 oh shit moments. I don't want that in my life. Two bomb ass ISAs that make a ton of money. And I want three agents, maybe four that do 30 deals a year and you train the shit out. What if they leave? They won't. Why? Is where else are they going to go to get that? So you don't prepare, you know, now we're in a, now we're in what we're in. So now you have to double down. Now you double down. You, you join a program like mine. Don't join my program. I don't care. You're not going to hurt my feelings. You're not going to hurt my feelings. You guys don't want to join. I feel bad because I should have done a better job, but you're not going to hurt my feelings because I know that the people that come into our program, they learn tonality. They learn verbal cues and pauses and pacing. Shit, I coach with you, Cody. You show up to our calls. The cool thing about you and I is I'm like, hey, bro, did you see this? And I send you something on Slack. You're like, where did you get that from? I'm like, my coach. Like, oh my God, that's so good. I'm like, yeah, that's like, I'm like a novice compared to the people I coach with. 
but compared to the average agent, I'm an expert. Right. But it's what do you do when it's cold outside? Well, you bundle up and you know, here's how we bundle up. You guys, you'd have to do more of the activities and you have to improve your skills and you have to review your calls. You have to review your DMS. You have to review your text messages. You have to see why people responded, why they did it. You have to do more of everything. People that are willing to eat crow right now are going to come out so far ahead. And this is what we did in 2010. We ate crow. I sat in my room. I called for six hours a day, seven hours a day. I didn't have anything else to do. I'd have no money. I'd have no job. I, I didn't have no appointments. I called until I got one. And if I didn't get one that day, I called again the next morning. I called again. I did open houses. The market shifted sooner in Seattle than in other places. First full year, 8 million. Second year, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 50 million. The difference between us and what everybody else thought prepped every day because I knew winter was coming. And when it hit, I didn't want us to be having to prep. Most places, mm -hmm. they think it's like you said, Ed, oh, my marketing's so good. I'm like, bro, put your marketing up next to mine. I guarantee you my marketing spokes, your average agent marketing. You, you had a line out the door, we set the record in the neighborhood. You had a line, we set the record. We, we closed on the same day. So your line is great, but my record, and that's what I would tell clients because proof over promise. So <laughs> when you are prepared every day, like you, like you guys talk about, your people win. This was a ton of fun. I, it was really great getting both of your perspectives. I know you, you guys both sorry, won. I'm sorry I was late. Yeah, it's all good, man. Yeah, I, I forgive you. I was, uh, you're forgiven. I was, I was bummed. You told me, Ed, I told the guy to hurry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, like, I'm glad that you glad that you joined us. Uh, glad you joined us. It was a uh, great episode and ton of, ton of insights. Ed, Ed uh, if somebody wants to uh, jam with you and they want to maybe it's an agent to agent referral, maybe they want to learn a little bit more about your team. I mean, they want to smoke a cohiba with you. Yeah, where, okay. where is, where can we direct them to have a conversation with you? Instagram, Ed Stulak, E D S T U L A K. You heard it here. Another Boom. episode of the R Agent Podcast. We got any value today? All we ask is you leave us a review. Uh, we don't monetize these things, but uh, we are willing to take your money. We are willing to we take your money. Thousands, <laughs> we have thousands of agents listening to this thing every month now. So now, right. now I feel good about asking because our, our our downloads I are feel, up. I feel good. I feel good asking follow up boss for a sponsorship now that they're owned by Zillow. So. Dude, I put a good. lot of, I gave Zillow at least, uh, at least 600 grand, if not more. Uh, you know, follow boss, if you're listening to this. For a year. <laughs> director, director of marketing, feel free to, uh, <laughs> feel free to reach out to Vikram or I. But, uh, yeah. you know, but in all seriousness, uh, we do appreciate your time today, Ed. Uh, yeah, that's you great. Know, thanks for playing all out with us today. And I want to say thank you for tuning in to another episode of the RE Agent Podcast. We'll see you soon.